Okay, this is, <coughs> excuse me, John from Clock Repairs Merseyside again. Right, I'm going to do a couple of videos on traditional grandfather clocks. The type I mean, obviously, uh, made probably from, say, the early 18th century, uh, going maybe towards the beginning of the 19th century. Now, at that particular time, there the, the were a lot of clockmakers about. I mean, um, you, 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 there wasn't sort of any particular clockmaker, I wouldn't have thought, dominating the market, but there was a lot of uh, clockmakers. Obviously, there was a few clockmakers down south um, who were considered uh, better, uh, but um, I don't know. And then you had your provincial clockmakers, uh, such as, you know, this guy, William Jones here from Wales. Now, this is a 30-hour grandfather clock, and I probably date it round about 1750, 1760, something like that. Um, if you go down, you can see it's a single weight-driven clock. And, you know, the weight is quite quite a small type weight, and obviously it's pendulum driven. Now, it, it, it was only repaired this week, so it's been put on test, but we do suspect we'll be taking it off and doing other little things to it. Uh, there was quite a, a lot wrong with it, really, to be honest with you. At some point in its life, we believe it's been dropped. And uh, if you look to this corner, you can actually see, um, you know, there's a little bit of damage and it's actually sort of slightly curled over. If you look and you see that bell, we put them on upside down. Uh, obviously so that when they do strike they don't hit the bell but we do want the clock to strike if you know what I'm saying so we can see see the action and see what happens uh, but not on the bell obviously my neighbours will be going mad um, and if you come down to the dial you can see there's a lot of marks on the dial now the reason for that the centre pinion on this particular clock was bent completely out of shape um, I'll do another video on that type of stuff because it's a little bit more involved than I want to cover on in this particular video at the moment. But anyway, we straightened that all up. We heated it up and we straightened it all up and got, you know, got good results with that. Uh, you've got to understand that the conical as well. So, you know, you've, uh, it, you know, it's not just a matter of straightening them as easy as that. I mean, you know, there's a lot to, there's a lot more to it, really, to be honest with you. But as I say, it's it's for another video maybe, um, if I, you know, can do that. Anyway, this is a 30-hour clock. Okay, so it's one way driven. Last 30 hours, the idea is you, you're supposed to uh, wind them up within 30 hours. And this then should keep it, um, you know, obviously keeping reasonable time. Uh, also, your strike. Now, the strike on these is like a, a count wheel type strike. So if you didn't wind it up every 30 hours and you left it for a few days, Whatever time it stopped that sort of, so to speak, that's near that hour, that's where it's going to strike. So then you'd have to adjust it again uh, by lifting the lever, which is on the strike wheel, which will then, you know, advance it and then you can get it to the right hour. Um, often there was a lever coming out so that people could do this. And there might have been a piece of string hanging down to do this, but most often it's, it's not there. Um, so... Sometimes we do add the lever to them uh, to make it more convenient for the customer, depending on um, what what the customer is like, really. Um, but being honest, some customers like fiddling about to an extent. They don't want, when I say fiddling about, they don't mean to try and break the clock or whatever or cause problems. I mean, they just like this hands-on approach to, 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 to older clocks, which, you know, this is something that quartz clocks can't... Um, you know, begin to replicate. I mean, it, 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 there's nothing there, is that? I mean, you know, it's so simple. You put a battery in and, you know, that's it. It goes, it, you know, you don't have to worry about it for, you know, six or eight months and then before when the battery starts running down, it starts being really inaccurate. A clock like this, you know, obviously th there is going to be inaccuracies with any mechanical clock. I mean, you're going to have to adjust them from uh, time to time anyway, even if, you you know, with the best, best will in the world of setting them up. Now, my suspicion with this clock is that the pendulum is not the correct one. And my reasoning behind that is that we've got it in a position at the minute where it's higher than it should be. Uh, and we're trying to gain good time. Now, at one point it was so slow, I actually thought there was something wrong with the movement. But as we've hired it up and hired it up and over days, it's it started to get nearer to the right time. Although, you know, it's still probably about 15, 20 minutes out now. But we're getting a lot closer. I'm talking... 
you know, probably in an hour, 30 minutes out, if you like. The other reason I suspect it's 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 been it's it's not the correct pendulum is this pendulum leader is sort of new, which we, we haven't done that. We we've serviced the movements as you can see. The movement is nice and clean. It certainly wasn't like that. We have other pictures of it. It certainly wasn't like that. We've got it to that stage uh, where you know it's been cleaned. Now that that will have been cleaned by hand. Uh, we won't throw uh, or put rather. We won't put. Uh, you know, clocks of this age in an ultrasonic cleaner at all. We will clean them by hand and that's what happens to them. Um, we probably have a, a sort of cut off date, uh, anything from about 1880 backwards. We, we, we won't, we won't, um, we won't put them in an ultrasonic cleaner. We'll just, we'll just hand clean them. And also we can inspect them much better that way. So that's what we do. Now, another thing we do is when we're listening to the beat, now you can imagine we have, quite a few sometimes this this room has got half a dozen clocks running at the same time in it so what we do we have one of these i'll just go over to here we have a, it's only a simple guitar amplifier um and you know you, you can buy them on ebay or amazon and what we do is we put that on we have like a, a clip on um pickup so to isolate to isolate a clock got to excuse me i'm holding the camera and trying to link this up Now, you can hear that slightly out of beat, actually, but what I tend to do is I just go by the sound of the beat and get them running that way, get, as you know, a nice even TikTok. There is other ways of getting it really accurate, and I'll show you them um, maybe on another video. But, yeah, this is, this is, you know, the way we'll do it. We isolate it then, so we've got that one to concentrate on, and we're not sort of picking up anything from the other clocks. It's not that far out, it's not enough to stop it. it, it it's gonna carry on. I mean, you know, and, you know, people say, oh, you know, it's out of beat and I've had it before. I've had people, you know, contact me when I've made a comment on Facebook about, you know, it doesn't sound that far out to me. I don't think it's enough to stop it. And they're arguing with me and then, you know, you get into it a little bit with them. Um, and then you find out that they're some kind of clock watcher in the museum and rather than someone with any real experience of, you know how to set a, a mechanical clock up at all but yeah but that's pretty much a 30 hour clock um let me go right round it and let you have a a quick look but yeah really nice very very basic um you've got your figure of eight chain uh, on it now at one time more than likely that chain would have been a like a rope which it would have been like sash cord and they, they were sort of uh, plaited together. Very, very difficult thing to do. I've got to be honest, it's not something I can do now. Uh, I remember we, we got one in for repair. Um, they wanted the you know a rope on it, the type of rope on it. We did we, we did say we could convert it to a chain driven type clock, but they didn't want that. So I had to go to my uncle at the time. Uh, I might have mentioned him before. He's ninety three years of age now. Now he. He could do that, so I took took the movement to him and some rope, and he sat there for a couple of hours, plaiting it and you know getting it right, so it ran through and and that. Um, I stopped watching after a while because I thought, you know, I'd have to spend I'd have to spend days and days learning this. It's it's an art in itself, really, plaiting the rope. Uh, obviously now you can use nylon rope and you can bond it. You can you can sort of melt it and it'll bond together, give you a very similar effect. Uh, but yeah, that's a, a 30 hour painted dial clock. As I say, I'm sort of thinking 1750. And just for your thing, there's, there's all I've done with the, the, the guitar amplifier is I've just clipped it on to the movements. Obviously it's by the fly at the minute. So if we went to strike, it would cut, stop it striking. But you put it on in a place where, um, you know, obviously it's out of the way of any of the mechanism and it, you know, you can, you'll pick it up then. Sometimes you can put it on the top of the dial and you can pick it up. I mean, I don't know whether we will on this particular one. Well, you can actually, you can just, just hear it. It's just enough to isolate it and amplifies that sound and it gives you a good chance of getting it pretty close to being in beat. Anyway, this is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside. Uh, as I say, if you like my videos, please give me a like and, and subscribe to me. It really does help and encourages me to do more videos. 
I'm, I'm trying to stick really to more traditional type clocks, to be honest with you, because, you know, there is one or two on thing, but, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot more of other stuff on. And, you know, I think I think some of these clocks get really overlooked. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's, there's a lot out there. I mean, there's a lot out there. I mean, we're, you know, we probably take on probably 25% of the work we get offered because we just simply haven't got the space and we, we you know, we, we haven't got the time. I mean, it does take a while. I mean, you do a repair on this type of clock and you, even though it's a 30 hour clock, we'll leave it on test for, for, for maybe a week or two because we want to, we want to eke out all them little uh, faults that it has. I mean, because more often than not, the customer doesn't even know what's wrong with it. They've inherited it. They've, you know, they've been given it. It's a family heirloom. It's been, hasn't worked for 30 years. So, so they, they've no idea what's wrong with it at all. I mean, last time they seen it, they might have been children and, you know, it worked then and that's all they know. So sometimes the idea for us is to, you know, try to get the clocks working um, and then go from there see what we've got and then we can give them a decent quote about you know and get it right first time not always possible i mean this particular clock was so dirty and uh so you know it wasn't in really it hadn't been serviced probably for a hundred years and it was really we, we, we couldn't we it wasn't sensible to start it running so we we took it to pieces and we you know doing that you take a chance really you really do i mean because you know things can you might not get it right and uh, and so you know you could not be successful at the end of the day um so you'd have to be a little bit careful sometimes you'd have to sink that and if you find something else you have to you know just get on with it and get it done thankfully thankfully with most of these clocks i mean you know they're pretty solid i mean you you can pretty much get them up and running um without a load of trouble very often most of the time we have trouble is when it's been looked at by some somebody else who hasn't had any idea what they're doing, and they've just faffed about with it, and it's created a, you know some issues for us, um, and that's it. And often I think it's been mentioned on here as well that some of these older clocks, some of the early repairs on them, were probably done by blacksmiths. I mean, people think I'm joking when I say that. I'm not. I mean, when you see heavy hammer marks and punch marks on plating. I mean, obviously, that's the you know that it's a blacksmith or something, isn't it? It's not, it's not, um, it's not the fact of the matter that it's a clockmaker being a bit you know rough. It's a you know it's who it is. But there again, I mean, you do see a lot of stuff, obviously, which um, you know I, I might actually uh, do a video on some of the horrors of what we do actually see from time to time. Uh, but you know, I, I, thankfully. Most of the older stuff, I mean, when it's being sort of serviced by a clockmaker uh, at the time, being honest with you, it, it's 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 not so bad. I mean, you can see, obviously, there's been attention to detail. He's done the job right. It's when you sort of get your mum, when, when, you know, I don't want to sort of call anybody, but sometimes, you know, you get people, instead of just, you know, brushing something, they'll punch it. And you can tell it's modern punching. You you know it's done with a with a with a, a an automatic sensor punch rather than you know you're getting it, you know someone doing it with it with it with a with you know just a normal hammer and punch. It's it's more of a sensor punch and, and all manner of stuff. I mean, you know the the every time you're doing punching, you're stretching the plates and you know you're creating other issues. Grandfather clocks are very forgiven. I mean, you know. They, they are forgiven. Uh, you couldn't do some of the things that they've done in the past with a more modern clock now, or a Hamley, or anything like that. It just simply wouldn't work. You, you, you would, you would have more problems. You, you, you'd have to put a new movement in it. Would it, that would be the end of it. But you know, anyway, this is John from Clock Repairs Merseyside. Uh, hope you enjoy my videos. And as I've said, give me a subscribe and a like. Really appreciate it. Thank you.